All right, quickly on to migration, Craig. Now, when people are migrating, some of the things that is is possible and is not possible, the things that are possible yeah, is moving your blog content. It can be imported from different sites. That's probably similar to a lot of other platforms. What you can't move very, very well, and you will need to rebuild a lot of the pages or landing pages and a lot of the SEO elements that you're going to have to copy in. And this is across any site. So we built sites across multiple platforms and it's the same story. So if anyone tells you that it's harder to do it one way or the other, usually isn't. It's usually the same process wherever you're going. So just be aware of that. I think that's right. We're going to talk about this a little bit more in Shot 11 as well. But often when you're doing a website refresh project, you know, every three to four years, you rebuild the website, new design. Let's say, oh, we've changed our site architecture because the product mix has changed. The thing. It's like it's a big change. It's not like a, just a lift and shift. So if you said we just want to lift everything from WordPress to put it into HubSpot, exactly the same content looks the same and that, I'd be like, well, why? Why are you doing that? And maybe it's, oh, look, we just we want to get rid of the hosting hassles. Okay, migration is going to be a key part of that project. But most projects aren't like that. They're like, right, we're moving to, we're doing a website refresh, all these things, and also let's move the platform at the same time as well to a better platform. Okay, then it's not a key. The migration part is not kind of I'll a, give you a little example, done. Craig. Got mm. a customer who has been on HubSpot for a while and we suggested to lift their parents to use a new theme. And so one of the things in that process was we use the power theme Doing the blog was really easy. They'd actually, when they were when they were doing their blog posts, they were actually doing things. They were formatting it really well, right? Didn't really show on the on their old site. So when we made the switch, the blog, there were a few things we had to fix, but relatively quickly we made right. the switch. Looks really good. The on the other hand, all the pages, because of the way things have been built, we actually have to create. So we use content staging, we create new pages in content staging and use that so we can use the right components and the right, right modules, et cetera. So yeah. it's not a really simple, I'll switch the template, it'll work. Yep. And that's what we're doing. But I'm so grateful that there is a content staging area where you can build stuff, we can exactly. preview it and then we can publish it, right? And I think that's the benefit. That's, those are things you can't see until you get into the weeds of doing something. And then you go, oh, I now get why we use HubSpot. So. Yeah, actually, I want to extend that thought. And we talked about this when we did the full content hub thing. Let's just chat about staging. Because the beautiful way that HubSpot has implemented staging, exactly like you said, you can have a few pages. Or let's say you've got hundreds of pages in staging. You can publish three of them Correct. to live. Now, try and do that on any other platform, and it's actually really hard. So they'll often build, oh, we're in WordPress, let's build a whole staging site. The new site's in WordPress, here's the staging site. You can't kind of say, oh, we'll push a few pages over. No. It's like, oh, well, the whole site goes live. Correct. So just, I just think that's an under, underrated feature of HubSpot. Yeah, we'll just put that into staging. Yeah. Or this section of the site. We, we're, we're doing a refresh just of this section. Oh, just those 10 pages. Great and then push them live. The rest are still being worked on in staging. 